Vince Lombardi is probably the most hated man in professional football. I mean, every coach wants to beat Lombardi more than any man. He Can never cut win? corners. He played to win. He was a winner. He knew it was a profession, and he got the job done. Football's in his blood. He can't do without football. He loses it. He dreams of it. He eats it. And everything. Football is his life. That's his life. Uh, he has to win. That's his job. That's his life. That's his profession. To win, you have to drive. Vince says of himself that my restlessness and my impatience are either uh, my greatest strength or my greatest weakness. I have never been able to decide which. He is kind of a mystery. He eludes you. I couldn't, I couldn't sum him up. To me, he's the most wonderful man in the world. I think uh, the question has to be asked. There's been so much speculation. Well, I'm not ready. It's too much too early for me to say anything. I'm going to give Vince Lombardi a good hard look. A good hard look. Vincent Thomas Lombardi, head coach and general manager of the Green Bay Packers, a team unrivaled in the history of professional football. For the second year in a row, he has proven his dominance by defeating all competition for the world championship crown. At the first Super Bowl, Lombardi and the Packers won with the disciplined ease and finesse of an impeachable champion. In only nine years, Lombardi molded an organization that has become the standard by which all professional football teams are measured. How does such a man begin the inward search? Reflect upon his achievement. Take a good, hard look at himself. You're champion, right? Yeah, yeah. Therefore, you play like it all the time, regardless of what game it is or anything else. You play like champions every minute out there. Go get them. By the start of the 1967 season, Lombardi had guided the Packers to five National Football League championship games. He had endured defeat only once, but it was enough to destroy any hope for an unprecedented triple strand of NFL titles, the only prize he had not captured during his successful reign as a coach. For Lombardi, 1967 was a year of decision. It was his second attempt to achieve the unprecedented. But the season began with a toll of injuries that decimated his entire first string backfield. He won on the strength of a defense that managed to limp home to victory. Midway in the season, his quarterback, Bart Starr, returned, and the offense regained its lost firepower. The Packers began to meld as a team. An untested performer like rookie Travis Williams survived Lombardi's relentless manipulation of his backfield combinations and emerged a star. But no victory was an easy one for Lombardi and no defeat. When the Packers were stopped by the Colts, the rigors of the long, hard season were apparent. the 11th game of the season, earlier than anyone expected, they clinched first place in the Central Division by beating the Chicago Bears. A good, hard look. How much can a man ask of himself? How much can he ask of others? He doesn't ask, he demands. 
He demands every ounce of your effort, 150% of your desire, your strength, everything you have. Everybody grabbing out there. Nobody tackling. Just grabbing, everybody. Grab, grab, grab. Nobody tackling. Put your shoulders in there out there. No one is perfect. Uh, nobody can be perfect. But by striving for absolute perfection, you raise yourself notches above what you may have been content to be. And I think this is the... Uh, the law that he governs himself with. What are they doing for the center of that line out there? Too much out there! I've always felt that it would be very difficult to play for Coach Lombardi as a loser. He's a very intense man, and uh, I think that really, on a loser, uh, maybe he would just be a little too tough to play for. I'll tell you something, Leroy, you're not gonna get your job back unless we get a better performance. He, he is definitely intense. Uh, Football is an intense game, and it's an emotional game. Uh, you can't play it uh, with a skirt on. Come on, let's beat him up there! Oh, God. Hey, get him out of there, will you? Hey, what about that now? He had him on a... Hey! He had him on a shirt! He had him on a shoulder pad. He didn't have him on a mask. What the hell's going on out here? Hey, it's a fish! Vincent Thomas Lombardi, 1967. Vincent Thomas Lombardi, 1913. He was born on June 11th in Brooklyn, New York. His godfather was Sonny Jim Fitzsimmons, a legendary racetrack figure who trained three derby winners. When he was eight, he was an altar boy at St. Mark's Church. He wanted to be a priest. He wanted, he wanted to be a priest, then all of a sudden, that was off. Well, I met uh, Vince Lombardi when he was at St. Francis Prep in uh, Brooklyn. And uh, I uh, heard about his great prowess as a fullback in high school. So I contacted him and uh, I told him about the great things that would happen to him if he came to Fordham University. He was, he was one of the best players on the team. One of them, not, uh, I would say, the best, but uh, he was just as good as any of them. His greatest asset was his blocking. And of course, he was very, very good on defense and uh, Vince, on several occasions, intercepted passes. He didn't run very far with the ball when he got it, but he was good enough to intercept the pass. The Seven Blocks of Granite, a title earned by a Fordham line for its great defensive play. A former all-metropolitan fullback, Vince Lombardi, was converted to right guard. Those days, Fordham had a play in which Lombardi is the right guard, had to block the Pittsburgh left tackle, Tony Matizzi, who was 215, 220, an All-American player. Lombardi weighed about 172. And uh, in trying to block Matizzi, or in blocking him, Vince received severe uh, cuts inside his mouth to the extent that he played almost 60 minutes with a mouth full of blood. I think the point in that is, and I say the player was father of the coach, that there's nothing that Lombardi has demanded of the Packers that he didn't demand of himself in full measure in his own playing days. Past and present, 30 years. In 1937, he graduates cum laude from Fordham. He goes to law school, marries, and is forced to find work. He coaches at St. Cecilia's High School in New Jersey and teaches Latin, physics, and chemistry. In 1947, he returns to Fordham as an assistant coach. In 1949, he goes to West Point as an assistant to Red Blake. He showed ex exactly what I thought he was. Highly volatile, enthusiastic, given to degrees of emotion which were quite unlike most coaches. In other words, uh, he was someone like the volatile Italian that, uh, uh, who is up and down. But through it all, why, he had great, great ability. I was born in 
was a neophyte as far as football is concerned until I went to West Point. I've got to give him all the credit for whatever I know in football. In 1954, he goes to the New York Giants as an assistant to Jim Lee Howell. Some people were just a little concerned at first how he would take to uh, pro football. But uh, he was so smart, and he adapted himself right away. He saw what he needed to do, and had no one told him, he would have still found out, because he is a very knowledgeable person about the game. Of course, he wouldn't have had to known too much to help our team out. I think we'd won one game in 1953. For five years, Lombardi searches impatiently for a head coaching position. He's rejected for one reason or another. In February of 1959, he arrives in Green Bay head coach and general manager of a team that hasn't seen a winning season for 11 disastrous years. A team with no direction, no future, and no morale. We knew from the outset that he was in command, a take charge guy, and a guy that you couldn't fool around with. I didn't come in and have a meeting with the players and say, myself, I wonder what their morale is going to be. I wonder how they're going to accept me. That wasn't what I said to myself. They're going to have to accept me. I'm not worried about their morale. I'm worried about Vince Lombardi's morale here. He did uh, make the point that he had never been associated with a losing team, and he wasn't about to lose at Green Bay. And uh, he said, gentlemen, we're going to win one way or the other. If you look at this play, what we're trying to get is a seal here and a seal here and try to run this play in the alley. Alone, Lombardi resuscitates a disorganized, depressed, dying team. He force-feeds the Packers with his will to work, his demand for discipline, his relentless drive to win. By summer's end, the Packers are Lombardi. We were graded, of course, every play of every game throughout the year. And uh, on Thursdays, the grades would be posted on the blackboard for every eye to see. And, uh, Perhaps this was the start of something, instilling some pride in the individuals. Lombardi's approach to the game was fundamental, characterized by the power sweep, a simple play that required 11 men willing to perform with the coolness, swiftness, and precision of a single unit. It was a distillation of Lombardi's football philosophy that possession is nine-tenths of the law and that blocking and tackling is the remaining tenth. Lombardi's professional debut as head coach was against the Chicago Bears. His team on that day and from then on was built on the twin fortresses of a solid, unyielding defense and a balanced offense of passing and running that made every point count. Lombardi wins 13 games and loses only one. The championship is a rematch with the New York Giants at Yankee Stadium. The Giants, anxious to avenge the humiliation of the previous year, are aroused, but Lombardi cannot be stopped. It's a bitterly fought game, but neither the harsh winds nor the jealous cold can chill Lombardi's triumph. wins his second consecutive NFL championship. In 1963, Lombardi has built the strongest team in Packer history. He has a third NFL title within reach, but he loses two crucial games to the Chicago Bears and finishes second in the Western Conference. The same year, his star halfback, Paul Horning, is suspended for gambling. One of the most difficult things in my life that I had to do was picking up the telephone, calling Coach Lombardi, and trying to explain what had happened. He really adored this boy. He said he was as close to him as any ball player he ever coached. He was, on, he was, he was nearest the heart. He was uh, kind of hard to talk to long distance. I wish I would have been in his office looking back on it now. But he told me uh, 
I guess as any father would tell his son, he said, well, you just keep your nose clean. I don't care what you do all year, but you just better be a good, uh, just stay away from everybody. I mean, it would be good if you went to uh, some place off by yourself for a complete year, and uh, maybe you'll be reinstated. It was the most satisfying, I think, moment of my life when I stood to kick off against the Chicago Bears in 1964. I know, uh, I can't tell you how happy I was to be given the opportunity to play football again. And we went on to win and I had a, a real fine day. I think Coach was more happy for me that particular day than uh, that he was himself. I know that uh, he gave me a big hug after the ball game and he said, welcome back. Despite Horning's return, Lombardi cannot reverse the downward spiral of his team. It's his worst season since 1959. The Packers finish second to the Baltimore Colts, who go on to meet the Cleveland Browns for the NFL title. For two years, Lombardi endures frustration and defeat. 1965 will be a time for rebuilding, a test of his ability as a coach, and a test of his strength as a man. His approach to the game of football is, is very much like the approach to the game of life, basically fundamental. Uh, not leaving anything to chance, being well prepared, thoroughly disciplined. Uh, this is the approach that he gave you in getting ready for a football game. What do you got on here? First real Sunday's game. Lombardi learned the value of pre-game analysis from Red Blake. He studies films intensively to shape the game plan against his opponent. Tell you. All right, ready? 4-3 okay, K-Zone. K-Zone. All right, let's go now. Come on, baby. Okay, you have a brown right. Yeah, it holds up, doesn't it? Huh? Third down. He went weak with the fullback fanning, second and long. Went away from the fullback. Went with the fullback on a flood, went with the fullback on a flood. So it does hold up somewhat. Move to it, under weak gut. You have a brown left, brown left. Good chest. Coach Lombardi has always felt that physical condition can mean maybe two or three victories a year, especially in professional football. And uh, if that is the case, he believes that the Green Bay is going to be the best physical condition football team in America. He's always said that you can't play a football game on Sunday. You have to start playing that football game on Tuesday, the first day of practice. Come on, look at me, 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 look at me. Look at me, look at me. All right. coaching is that he continually puts you and works you on these basic techniques that you need to, to block, and he keeps you on it day in and day out and makes you a better football player. Excellent, excellent. The veterans are not treated any different than than the young rookies coming in. We all have to do every drill and do everything uh, 100%. As a man, Lombardi is a very unusual combination of uh, the great qualities of leadership, the ability to inspire, the ability to transmit dedication, and especially the ability to teach. I don't think there's any difference uh, whether you uh, teach on the football field or whether you teach in the classroom. They're both exactly the same. A good teacher puts across what he must put across to his pupils. But you show them how and why. You have to get them to be a part of it. They have to understand. If they understand, they'll do it and do it the right way. The defensive left end, Boss and Baker. They're all four strong people. McGee, all four of them, real strong on the takeoffs. Third and short situation. Safety's up. Here's a back to the back of the and brother, is that open? You'll never in your life seen anything more open than that. 
Ordinarily, we'd use a lot After a general meeting with the team, Lombardi works privately with his quarterbacks. The strategy is reviewed again and simplified. Which may make your 38 pretty good. 38 toss to that side. But not your pitch outs. Go ahead now! You had him! Oh, well, he couldn't hit the guy. You had him, though. Snap it! You don't see the X nine out of once out of a million times. Let's go. A lot of times, by the way, both these halfbacks are real bad on flies. <laughs> Jeez, if we don't throw, we we got to throw at least ten or twelve, fifteen flies in this ball game. They can't cover. What are you doing out there, Marcine? Come on, Marcine. Let's go here. You got a circle route right down the field. No. I saw we weren't going to use the four pass for this thing. <laughs> Well, because of its very nature, takes a great deal of dedication. There's a great deal of work to going into getting ready to play a game of football. It's a physical game. It's a game of hard knocks. And he's always believed that there's only two things that come before football. That's your religion and your family. There's only one job, and that's football. Somebody said he made football players out of some men, and he made men out of some football players. I think he's much more proud of the fact that he made some men out of football players. Just being associated with him, just being around him, made you a, a bigger, a stronger, a better person. And that you could not help but grow in stature from this experience. He's a coach that I'm sure that have prepared a lot of us to go out and live in a competitive society. Uh, he taught us a lot of values about life. profession it's a great profession you'd be proud of this game and you can do a great deal for football today great deal for all the players in the league and everything else go out there and play this ball game like i know you can play it he tells you that if you give anything less than the best that you have within you at any time regardless of the the situation regardless of the consequences that uh, you're cheating yourself you're cheating your teammates you're cheating professional football and you're cheating the fans who uh, uh, who have made the game what it is today for you. But most of all, you're cheating your maker who gave you that God-given talent with which to succeed. And this great pride that we do have in being part of a, a winning team. And I think it all stems down from Lombardi. He hates to lose. Anytime, anywhere. A hot Sunday afternoon in Los Angeles, 1967. A meaningless game for a team that has won its division title. But for Lombardi, there is no substitute for victory, no second place, no game without meaning. To win is to succeed, and the Rams will meet the best that Lombardi can offer. The double team we missed. We missed the double team. Huh? Come on, Danny! The first pack of drive is stopped. Don Chandler's field goal attempt is short and wide. The Rams' defense has canceled the Packers' passing game. But late in the first quarter, the Packers begin to move. Just before the end of the quarter, Starr completes his first touchdown pass to Carroll Day. The Packers lead the Rams, 7-0. But then the game seesaws for three quarters, neither team gaining definite superiority on the field or on the scoreboard. By the end of the third period, the Rams are leading by a touchdown. Hey, supposed to be a hell of a defensive club. It didn't look like it to me. All the way down, about 70 yards have a little bit of ability that they don't seem to use or I've made the statement at times 
his gifted children, and I think he thinks of everyone on the club as a child, or his child particularly. And he drives his gifted people so much harder than he does anyone else. He demands that you use your God-given ability the best you can. Travis Williams, the most gifted of Lombardi's children. I figured that if Lombardi drafted me, he must have had a reason. But I still yet don't know why, but when I came here, I just wanted to just do my best and just really put everything I had into it to try to make this play. Chandler's conversion ties the score 17-17. Oh, what a man! Travis! Hey, Phil, get your defense together now, will you please? Get them together up there a little bit. Go away, Travis. Go away, all right? A little bit. Go away, go away. Go away. Go away. Williams' touchdown rekindled the Packers' confidence in a definite win. They played like champions and with nothing at stake except their pride and dignity. With minutes remaining in the fourth quarter, they lead the Rams 24-20. Got to run it, though, because 111, I thought it was less than that. Holy crap. You got to make a first down here. Right up there. He just Jones came way inside. Just missed him cold. Yeah, what the hell are we gonna do? We got the cast over back. No, we can't help it. Uh, that's all we got. Just don't drop the ball, but we can punt the ball to somebody. We're gonna have the punt again, Coach. You want Chandler to punt? No, I don't want Chandler to punt. Why the hell would I have Chandler to punt? You just put your kick in the run, baby. Come on. Oh, Jesus. Come real hard inside. I guess he's a punter here. Yeah. The other guy just hasn't been punting. Suppose he put the line drive down there and they run it back. What was the last play, Bart? Well, who the hell is that? Well, we missed everybody on that drive. Let's block up there now! Seven, the Green Bay Packers, 24. Again, Vince Lombardi. Good to have you back, Coach. Well, good to be back, too. And looking back over that one, would you change anything? Well, I suppose in any game, or I suppose if the only thing I would change would be the score, really. And I suppose you could second-guess yourself 40 or 50 times. 
But how many punts are blocked? Uh, Anderson hasn't had one block this year. He's a quick rhythm punter. And uh, actually, that's the that's the answer. We, you strategy. can lose because you were outclassed to route beat. Or that day you gave your all and it didn't work. Or he didn't prepare them or something went amiss, so you got a bad break. But don't lose looking bad. I got to say I'm as proud of this football team as their performance today as anything I could think of. I, I think it's a credit to the profession and it's a credit to the football itself that a team who's had their own division title one would go out and play as hard as, as our team played today. It's been a long season, Al, and uh, we like to get the season over with and get ready for the December 23rd game against whoever it may be, uh, Baltimore or the Los Angeles Rams. Past and present, the patterns of memory. In 1963, the Packers were defeated twice by the Chicago Bears, and Lombardi's hope for three consecutive NFL titles was crushed. In 1964, the Packers were defeated twice by the Baltimore Colts, and Lombardi's attempt for even a division title was thwarted. History seemed to be repeating itself. One more defeat by the Los Angeles Rams, and the pattern would be complete. Lombardi's failure would be total. He would have to begin again to forge the chain of three consecutive NFL titles. I'm not in the habit of quoting scripture, but I was groping, I think, at the time for, for something in order to give my club a little bit of a lift. I hope I can remember it now. Don't you know that while all the runners in a stadium are in a race, only one wins the prize, so run to win. The Rams, a young, hungry team under coach George Allen, came to the conference playoff with an eight-game winning streak. The Packers came with Lombardi and a will to win. By the end of the first quarter, the Rams have dominated every phase of play and take the lead on a pass from Roman Gabriel to Bernie Casey. Packers nothing, Rams seven. Nothing goes right at the start of the second quarter. Ram safety Chuck Lampson intercepts Bart Starr's expected third down pass. Lombardi drives. Lombardi drives and the Packers run to win. Run to win. Travis Williams rips through the Rams' defensive line and races 47 yards to a touchdown. Packers 7, Rams 7. Run to win. A third down pass to Carroll Dale. Packers 14, Rams 7. Run to win. Chuck Mercine up the middle. Packers 21, Rams 7. By the end of the third quarter, the Packers are the most determined football machine in the world. The Rams are stifled. Victory is beyond their reach. It is the most bitterly fought game of the year. Not only the pride of the Packers, but a chance for a third street championship is at stake. people that cannot play with little hurts and he knows this and we have had people there but there are a lot of people who can and I don't believe anyone knows just what they can do until they try and he makes sure you try The 
there's complete compassion for these players. But you can't harp on them night and day. If you do, they become big problems. Live with it, in other words. Live with it. A year of injuries, a year of disappointment is forgotten. Run to win. Run to win. Travis Williams for the final touchdown. Run to win. Now only Dallas stands between Lombardi and his nine-year quest. In 1967, Green Bay versus Dallas, the NFL championship. Championships are there to be won. And the fact that you win one, or you win two, or you win three doesn't mean to say that you should be filled up now. I think you should win as many as you can, and every time you go out there, you should try to win. For anybody who has the idea that just to play or just to take part, and that's all that's necessary, I think, I think he's in the wrong business. I think he's in the wrong country. One of the things that made America great is to try to be the best in everything that they do. And the best, again, is signified by winning. On the coldest day in championship records, Lombardi finally has pro football history in his grasp. In the first quarter, Green Bay moves swiftly to establish its authority. Driving downfield methodically, on the ground and through the air. Green Bay takes the lead early with a pass from Starr to Boyd Dower. The temperature falls to a destructive 13 degrees below zero. The bitter cold pervades every inch of Lambeau Field. For Lombardi, whose game depends on execution, the weather is only another factor in his game plan. The Starr to Dollar combination stuns Dallas again in the second period. Coach Tom Landry's offense is impotent, but two quick turns of events cancel the expected route. Caught in the vicious whirl of the Dallas defense, Bart Starr fumbles. George Andre recovers and tumbles into the end zone. The Packers lead is cut by seven points. Then Willie Wood bobbles the ball. Dallas recovers again and converts the opportunity into a field goal. Two errors have altered the course of the championship. At halftime, the Packers lead by a mere four points. The third period is scoreless. Lombardi's offense is humbled, manhandled, and limited to a meager 10 yards. Only Lombardi's defense maintains the balance. The defense has carried Lombardi to the championship game. But at the start of the final period, its strength withers away, and the Dallas offense scores its first touchdown. On a halfback option, Dan Reeves passes to Lance Renzel. Trailing 17-14, the Packers no longer look like champions. Dallas takes the offensive as the field turns to ice. Packers defense and the frozen field combined to stifle the Cowboys' final bid for glory. They can only hope for the clock to run out. At four minutes, 50 seconds of the final quarter, the Packers have 68 yards to cross, 68 yards of ice, 68 yards of a determined Dallas defense. Packers cross midfield on a pass from Starr to Boyd Dowler. Three minutes, 30 seconds remain.
Packers suffer a serious reversal as Cowboy and Willie Towns smothers Anderson for a nine-yard loss. On second and 19, Starr passes to Donnie Anderson, who maneuvers 13 yards to the Dallas 39. Two minutes remain. Starr secures the vital first down with another pass to Anderson. One minute 40 remain. On first and 10, Starr tosses a swing pass to Chuck Mercine who gets to the 11 yard line. One minute 11 remain. Mercine crashes eight yards closer. 54 seconds remain. Donnie Anderson makes it first and goal on the one. 30 seconds remain. Anderson with poor footing tries again. No gain. 20 seconds remain. Anderson slips on the icy field. No gain. Star calls his last time out. 16 seconds remain. We went with uh, Anderson twice, and then we went with the wedge play. The wedge play could have been given to the fullback, or Joe Star could have taken himself. But that play was discussed on the sidelines. Now, as far as going for the touchdown and not going for the field goal, that was my decision from the sideline. That's not Star's decision in the game. That had to be my decision. If it had failed, uh, I would have the one who been, been roasted, not, uh, <laughs> not by Star. <laughs> Sixteen seconds. Time enough for one more play. Time enough for daring. Time enough for failure. Time enough for Lombardi to win a third straight NFL championship. Not the bay which run in a race, run all, but one receiveth the prize, so run that ye may obtain. As all of football has grown in leaps and in bounds since 1958, the season begins... Take a good, hard look. Vincent Thomas Lombardi, head coach and general manager of the Green Bay Packers. A winner. To every task, he brought the desire, the dedication, the discipline to succeed. He never coached a losing team. Because of the nature of the business, and because of the growth of the business, and the corporate structure of the Packers, I believe it is impractical for me to try to do both jobs, and I feel I must relinquish one of them. Fortunately, I have had a very capable and a very loyal assistant. Gentlemen, let me introduce to you now the new head coach of the Green Bay Packers, Mr. Phil Bankston. If I had to do things all over again, I, I think I would be very, very... I think I would pray for more patience, maybe, and more understanding. I, I think these are the two areas where I could, uh, I could improve a great deal, and I've been trying to, believe me. Vincent Thomas Lombardi, February 1st, 